Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the NWA review for the 20, um, let's see, 26th of October 2021. Uh, all women's event this week taped in, in St. Louis. Chiron opened the all women's empower themed NWA power by cutting a promo about how he wasn't going to trust anyone in the NWA again and that he's going to get focused on his mission of winning gold in the NWA challenging Tyrus. For the TV title, not a bad promo to open the show. Molina defeated Chelsea Green and Kylie Ray in the uh, number one contenders match. Uh, not a bad match. Everyone has a little bit of a shine throughout. Didn't have enough time to get going. Um, they could easily wrestle again at some point with differing results and probably get somewhere cool. Molina kicked Green and serves the floor. Hits a shoulder block and a DDT. Ray... On Ray, Green pulls Molina from the ring and attacks her around ringside. Ray then hits a super kick on Green and then hits a dive onto the floor. Ray then hits a, uh, uses cash on Green's arm to take most of the damage. Green then hits a suicide dive onto both Ray and Molina. Uh, match is a little bit short. Um, and then Green hits a drop kick on Molina. Ray hits a super kick on Green. And then Molina locked a California Nightmare on both women. But they countered on a neck breaker. Green goes for the end prettier. But Molina is able to counter and score a pinfall. May Valentine was with women's champion Camille. Who made it clear she wanted to be on the special show challenge hometown girl Tootie Lynn that had nothing to say about that Tom Latimer and Strictly Business are not really acknowledged with the Nick Aldis angle uh, Kyle Davis said before the match that if, win, if Lynn won she'd get a title shot against Camille obviously that doesn't happen Lynn does roll up Camille for a two count early and hits a Rana Camille rolls to the floor and Argues with Davis about the earlier announcement. Camille comes back into the ring and hits a suplex on Lynn. Uh, and then gets a bunch of offense after this. Um, Camille finishes her off with a spear and we're good to go. Lady Frost defeats Sky Blue in a uh, Burks Rules match. We're informed that Mildred Burks Rules match you couldn't use. Closed fist, couldn't throw someone over the top rope, and couldn't use top rope moves. Um, anyway, so Blue hits a few arm drags and sends Frost to the floor. They exchange a few holds, including uh, Frost backflipping out of an arm twist, but then eating a super kick in the process from Blue. Frost gets to her feet and does so relatively quickly and then throws a camel clutch, camel clutch on Blue but hadn't stopped herself from fro throwing, throwing Blue over the top rope. Frost then kicks Blue in the face and goes for Moonsault, but stopped uh, on the top rope. Blue then responded with a knee lift for a near fall. Frost then hits a spinning kick and climbed the ropes to do the Moonsault anyway, but Blue knocks her off. Frost rolls out Blue... Blue uh, gets yanked up and, and then pulls the tights for the win. Um, anyway, J.R. Curtis is with Mae Valentine, cuts a promo, giving credit to all the women for how great NWA and power was. He addresses Aaron Stevens briefly and the recent troubles with losing, but spends most of the promo talking about how great the hex was. The end comes out and Paro grabs the mic ranting about how annoyed he was with Curtis and Stevens saying that he worked hard for his spot every week and promised to hurt anyone on the roster in his way. Anyway, uh, Tag Team Champions Hex, Allison Kay and Marty Bell with Kenzie Page defeated Gemicide and Pola Blaze with uh, Taryn Tyrell. To retain the titles. Marty Bell gets lost badly at the start of the contest. Um, Blaze and Gemicide all look quite good. So it's clear that Bell is a step behind the others. Bell then, uh, then started with Blaze. And Bell hits the ropes. 
delays, then goes for a drop down, but Bell just stops picking up slowly and locked on a headlock before tagging out. And I think she, she uh, gets lost somewhere in the middle here. Terrell distracts Bell and Blaze hits an X Factor for a near fall. Uh, Gemicide tagged, uh, tagged in and did some great squats while slamming Bell. And then, um, anyway, Bell hits a bad kick to Gemicide's midsection and hits DDT. Blaze NK tagged in NK. Throws Blaze over the ring. Terrell then gets on the apron to interfere, and Paige pulls her from the apron, leading to crushing brutality face first onto it. And uh, Kay and Bell hit hit hex marks the spot for the win to retain. Melina cuts a very uh, interesting promo about her being close to the women's championship. She shows real emotion and. Uh, seems like she's actually really into this. Pope gets a phone call before the main event and said he had to leave the announce table looking con concerned. Mickey James defeats Kara Hogan. Not a bad main event. James is good as always. Hogan keeps up when she's in there with a veteran. Uh, they stick to basics, headlocks, and counters, counter holds, pinfall attempts, and, and everything works out well. Plays into the finish. James gets the last and best counter, uh, tells a decent story going on with things. Hogan and James hug before the match, which is obviously mutual respect, test of strength, and that ends with Hogan taking out James's legs. They do some bridging attempts, pinfalls, and Hogan tries to hold James down. James takes Hogan to the mat for pinfall attempt, then she controls the hammer locks and other basic wrestling techniques. James took over with a headlock, but Hogan was able to counter into a leg scissors. James is able to bridge and then do a kick up out of it. And um, Hogan and James exchanged some pinfall attempts, neither able to get a clear advantage. Hogan then charged corner but eats an elbow and hits a rana from James. James then goes for a DDT but Hogan throws her into the corner. Hogan then hits a clothesline back elbow and a baseball slide drop kick but James kicks out of the pin attempt. Hogan then goes for a DDT but James counters into a schoolgirl roll up for a pinfall. Um, not a bad episode, definitely something different. At least the NWA always is a solid wrestling show, regardless of who and where it's done, and that is always a good thing. Anyway, we'll be back with more right after this.